Business and Livelihoods, translating discoveries into solutions and applications. I say it, 2021 brings together creativity, innovation, and community engagement in addressing the need for food and livelihood amidst these challenging times. As the spirit of global uncertainty unfolds, food and livelihood become central among societal imperatives. Societies have learned that coping with this crisis defines our future. I say at 2021 underscores the connectivity of agriculture and education to the environment. This connectivity is a critical lifeline for society to survive and flourish. As such, we pay homage and tribute to nature where the environment is embedded. Nature is a cocoon provides a variety of ecosystem services for food systems to thrive and livelihoods to prosper. The conference gathers the community of scholars and researchers and set forth a tone of urgency with creative and innovative solutions on making food systems and livelihoods sustainable. Perhaps this could be a way of saying thank you to Mother Nature for nurturing man and his landscapes. Welcome to Isaiah 2021. So good, mo uh, good morning, fellow educators, environmentalists, agriculturists, and researchers. So welcome to the second day of the International Conference on Education, Environment, and Agriculture 2021 with the theme Sustainable Food Systems and Livelihoods, Translating Discoveries into Solutions and Applications. So yesterday, our plenary tackled latest cutting-edge researches designed to offer comprehensive global discussion that address current issues in agriculture, environment, and education. Our plenary speaker shared to us insights on the following topics. So now, let's watch the recap of what transpired yesterday.
So thank you so much. So those uh, those topics was uh, where the chunks of the wide gamut of interesting and challenging topics. So with us, again, we would like to extend our gratitude to our keynote speaker, Dr. Adrin Idarilag, to the different plenary speakers, Professor Andrew Flox, Professor Tomo Koadachi, uh, Assistant Secretary Joan Lagunda, and Professor Quinn Bin Ha. So now, before we have the breakout session and the guidelines, let me walk you through the schedule of the second day of the international conference. So after the pre uh, preliminaries, we will have the breakout sessions. So we will have at least three hours for the breakout sessions, and after which we will have we will uh, return to the main conference for the synthesis and the closing program. So now let's have the different uh, breakout sessions. So the the different breakout sessions are as follows. We have sessions 1A to C for education, sessions 2A to E for environment, and sessions 3A to E for agriculture. So now let's have the guidelines to follow for this uh, second day of the international conference and the breakout sessions. That's it. That's the uh, the guidelines and also the schedule of what will happen today's uh, second day of the international conference. So, but before we have the breakout session, may I request all the participants to turn on their camera for the conference photograph for the second day? Okay. May we request everyone? 
the participants, moderator, and rapporteur, can you turn on your video for the conference photograph? So I Okay, turn that. Fourth. Okay, the fifth frame. Okay, some of our participants haven't yet turned on their video or camera, so please turn on your video or camera for the conference photograph. Okay, sixth group. Okay, seventh group. Eight group. Okay, we have the last group. Okay, thank you so much to all the participants. So now, a little reminder to all the participants and to the presenters. 10 minutes to present. And after each of the presenters, there will be an open forum. So after the presentations, all participants, the moderator and rapporteur will return to the main hall room for the synthesis and the closing program. So to facilitate uh, EC assignment of uh, uh, the breakout session, kindly rename your accounts into the format session. Now. in the format um, session number affiliation underscore your name. Okay, now, so I guess everyone is ready. So we will have 10 minutes for the uh, facility uh, assignment of the different respective uh, breakout session halls. Thank you so much and see you later. No, 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 no.
Hello, everyone. To our university officials, paper presenters, faculty researchers, and students present in this session, good morning. This conference, ISEA, is CBSUA's contribution in addressing the societal challenge of improving lives and securing a sustainable future through research and innovation. It is an event organized by CBSUA in partnership with Vietnam National University of Agriculture and the Ecosystems Research and Development Bureau of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. It gathers scientists, researchers, as a global community of scholars in an open discourse of current issues and concerns. And also solutions in food systems, learning systems, and ecosystems. On that note, I welcome you all to session 1B. We are indeed honored with your presence today as we listen to our paper presenters, tackle latest cutting edge researchers, and offer us comprehensive global discussions that address current issues in education. A total of 13 papers will be presented in this session, session 1B, education, it will be divided into three batches. After every four or five presentations, a 10 minute open forum will follow. That is to accommodate some questions and queries from the audience. We also have our live streaming via Facebook and those who are watching may also ask questions through chat box. Reminder for those who will be writing their questions in the chat box, please identify first the name of the presenter to whom your question is raised. Also, please be reminded to mute your microphone and turn off your camera during paper presentations. All are invited to turn on their cameras during the open forum. And when recognized, if you have, if you will ask a question. So let's start this session with our first paper presenter. Okay, with our first paper presenter, Marben A. Orogo from Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, Pasacao Campus, who will be presenting his research paper titled Educators Stress and Handling Schemes Based for Stress Coping Model. Thank 
Sorry for so, that. We have some technical. Uh, good morning, po, ma'am. Uh, there is no audio, po, ma'am Cherry. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir Berani. Um, with regards to that, we'll play again the video. Okay, thank you, po, ma'am. Hello, good morning. Uh, hello, sir. Good morning also. Good morning, sir Araba. So, can you now hear the audio? I'll try to play again, sir, your video for a while. Okay. So, should I speak or I will just let the presentation? Conference Education, Environment, and Agriculture 21. My study was all about educators' stress and handling schemes for stress model. I am Marvin A. Orog, an instructor to at CBS UA. The general objective of this is to determine the process of stress of the faculty members as their handling scheme. So specifically, this study was guided by the following objectives. Number one, determine the demographic profile of CVSUA faculty members. Number two, Identify the sources of stress of male and female faculty members of CBSUA. Number three, determine the stress handling schemes undertaken by male and female faculty members of CBSUA. Problem this of CBSUA faculty members, as well as it answers to the following questions. Number one, what the profile of CBSUA forces of stress of male and female faculty members of CBSUA? Number three, what are the stress CSU? For the results, speaking about the demographic profile of CBSU faculty members, so this undertakings examined the demographic profile of respondents. It includes age, civil status, number of children, ethnic rank, number of years in service, designation, and number of teaching loads.
So with regards to sex, more than half of the faculty say SUA are female. With regards to age, majority of the respondents were relatively young. With regards to civil status, majority of faculty members in CBSUA are married. With the married faculty and CBSUA has few number of siblings. Speaking about academic rank, it was revealed by the data that relatively large number of faculty members in CBSUA are instructors, followed by assistant professors, and last, associate professors. With regards to number of years in service, it was shown by data that majority of the faculty in CBSUA had served for relatively short period of time. With regards to designation, it was revealed by the data that more than half of the respondents don't hold any administrative position. Speaking about teaching loads, it was shown by the data that majority of the respondents has teaching load that exceeds the minimum units required by the Commission on Higher Education. With regards to sources of stress of the faculty, it was shown that time management, professional stress, discipline and motivation, and work-related stress was the four major sources of stress for both male and female. Speaking about the stress handling team, it was revealed by the data that the stress handling scheme for male were having positive attitude, having good sense of humor, seeing stress as a problem that can be solved, having good companion, and regularly praying. On the other hand, for female faculty, the stress handling scheme were seeing stress as a problem that can be solved, having good opinion, having positive attitude, regularly praying, and taking a day off. So these are the conclusions of the study. Majority of the faculty in CBSUA are female, young, and married. Among the married faculty, majority of them has few siblings. Large number of faculty in CBSUA are instructors, new in the field of teaching, reluctant to accept administrative position, and has teaching load that exceeds the minimum number of units required by the Commission on Higher Education. The sources of stress for both male and female faculty are time management, professional stress, discipline and motivation, work-related stress, Male and female faculty have different stress coping strategies that they had undertaken. And there are ways of coping stress that a faculty might choose to do. And these are the recommendations based on the findings. Hiring of male, uh, male faculty might be considered by the human resource management officer of the university to augment with the least number of male faculties. So maximizing the potentials of young faculty members might be considered by the administration for the welfare of the university. More friendly policy in monitoring faculty members of the university might be considered to give way to the married faculty.
seminars and trainings to further enhance the instructional competence of the faculty could be considered by the human resource director for all instructors. Orientation for faculty on their roles in the university could be considered to maximize their participation in accepting administrative position. Deans and program chair in the colleges might consider revisiting the chaired memo relative to faculty workload. Seminars on proper time management might be considered by the human resource director to minimize the stress of the faculty. Administrative support, such as providing instructional supplies and facilities, providing incentives or recognition to top performing faculties, and other schemes that could enhance motivation of the faculty might be considered. Planning of annual activities in summer term or summer vacation and preparation to the upcoming academic year to avoid lapses and interruption of the classes. Team building activities might be considered by the administrator or the human resource development officer to maintain a positive work environment. Seminars and workshops in stress management might be considered by the administration for the welfare of the faculty. And that would be all. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sir Marvin A. Orogo, for sharing with us your research. And to proceed with our second mm -hmm. presenter, She is Maria Lourdes Q. Beherin from Abra State Institute of Science and Technology. Her paper is, their paper is on online gaming and game apps, addiction of the students and their academic performance with her co-researchers, Maria Rebecca Taliedo, director of J.F. Aguayan and Marvin B. Peraz. Good day, everyone. I am Maria Lourdes Pellerin of Aberdeen of Science and Technology, and I'm very course that titled Online Games and Game App Addiction of the City Students and Their Academic Performance. Games can be either be entertainment, pastime, relaxation, or for learning. Likewise, it can develop strategies which enhances the critical thinking skills. Unfortunately, students spend in front of their mo mobile phones when playing downloaded games and would disrupt their time to open their printed learning modules. As a result, they cannot concentrate in answering the question and task provided in their modules. Thus, the academic performance of the students would be affected. For this, this study is hereby proposed is to scientifically determine whether the students are affected practice of online or downloaded games during their off-site and online games. The proposed study would want to determine the gaming practices of students while doing their modules and have impact on the acquisition of learning concepts. Therefore, the study aims to examine the academic purpose or achievement of the respondents despite of their frequency of online game and game addiction. Especially, this study wants to identify the profile of students in terms of the following independent variables. The age, the course, the gender, year level, allowance, type of gadget, and type of game play. Second, the level of online and game app addiction as perceived by the students. Third, the level of academic achievement of the respondents along the following courses are general education courses, prof ed education, 
and major or content courses. Fourth, the significant relationship between the profile of the students and their level of online introduction. Lastly, the significant relationship between the level of online introduction and their level of academic achievement. This study used the quantitative research time to determine the frequency of playing online games and game apps during the online and off-site learning and the level of addiction and its relationship to the academic performance of the second year of teacher education student of Abra State Institute of Science and Tech main campus. This is also a descriptive number in the researchers describe faults or effects of on online games and game apps during online and off-site learning to the respondent academic performance. To obtain the desired data from the second year students, the researchers use survey questions as the major instrument composed of three parts which are the profiles of the students or the respondents, a checklist, and a ranking scale of the different level of frequencies of playing online games apps of the respondents before and during the implementation of the learning modality. As to the results for the profile of respondents in terms of age, are 20 years old, while in gender, the respondents are mostly female. In course, most of the students are enrolled in the program. In year level, the respondents are all second year students. In terms of weekly allowance, majority of the respondents have an allowance of 500 pesos below. In gadget type, of the respondents are using their mobile phones. In terms of game played, majority of the respondents are playing mobile legends. In online games and in downloaded game app, majority of the students are playing the table shows that the level of addiction of the students on online and offline games is moderate addiction. This results in the indicators gadget time in use, change in behavior, and sleep late because of playing and downloading, downloading games, whereas ignoring module, late submission of out and neglect activities are a descriptive rating of slight addiction. Charging battery is the only one that record high addiction. Realize that the students are moderately displayed by online and offline game, but manage to do their modules. But since their main tool for their online classes is their phone, they have high risk in charging their gadgets. The tape reflects the average grade of all courses is satisfactory in general education oh, subjects. Whereas BID are performing very satisfactorily, while BESED, BPE, BSED, and BITS are performing satisfactorily. The results implies that BID students have a higher average because they focus on general education subjects as they are going to teach basic subjects in three. The Bachelor of Elementary Education major in general curriculum program provides a balanced knowledge in the theory concepts and the qualitative and quantitative aspects of learning, which is necessary to attain the highest possible standard of education. As the level of academic performance in professional education subjects, the result implies that the respondents are performing in professional education subjects since they are already introduced their different strategies of teaching. In fact, without professional development either at the individual or institutional levels of teaching, the teaching profession would become obsolete as the case of developing countries. Over, for the level of academic performance in specialized subjects, the table reflects that all courses have an academic performance level of very satisfactory. All courses have very satisfactory descriptive rating except BPED as satisfactory. This result is this because at their level, they only have one or two majors. They can focus on performing well on this subject with difficult activities. 
This table shows that there is a significant relationship between the profile and the level of addiction of the respondents in terms of their year level and spending on downloaded. This means that student in the sophomore year is prone to online game addiction. There is also a significant level of online game and game addiction and their level of academic achievement in terms of neglecting of activities in general education, in professional education, and in content or specialized subjects. With this result, it is seen that the higher level of respondents, they tend to neglect their activities in all their subjects, thus making them perform lower in their activities or in their academics. In addition, there is also a significant relationship between the of online game and game app addiction and their level of academic achievement in terms of excessive allowance. With the mentioned results of this study, it is therefore concluded that the respondents are mostly 20 years old, enrolled as sophomores. Majority of them are female and enrolled in the program. 500 pounds below allowance and use their phones for gaming and attending classes. The respondents are moderately addicted to online and offings. And although the level of academic performance of the respondents in terms of general education and professional education courses is satisfactory, while they perform very satisfactory in specialized courses. There is also a significant relationship between the profile of the respondents and their year level in terms of their online and offline gaming addiction. And lastly, there is a significant relationship between their level of academic performance and their, their level of addiction in online and offline games. This result means that they, they neglect more activities in their minor subjects. As to the recommendation, researchers recommend that first, students must focus more on improving their academic performance by prioritizing the activity on their module. Second, students must manage their time appropriately between their studies and issues. Third, there should be parental guidance for the students in order for them to, dis to be disciplined enough in answering their mode. Lastly, for teachers, they must monitor their students. On this study, these are the references used by the researchers. Thank you very much, Ma'am Rudes Beherin, for sharing with us your research. There was a request in the chat box from Sir Marvin Orogo regarding the, regarding the video presentations. Um, Isaiah will, be, will release a conference proceeding wherein all the abstracts from this Isaiah second, second Isaiah are, are all available. Likewise, this is um, being streamed live in the FB. Um, everybody is, is welcome to, to watch or re-watch those videos. So let's proceed with our third presenter. Our third presenter is Jopet Vincent B. Medalia from Sorsogon State College, Bulan Campus, together with her his co-researchers, Mark Anthony D. D. Pad and Corazon G. Bongalosa, with their research on feasibility offering of Bachelor of Technical Vocational Teacher Education, BTV TED, major in computer programming in Sorsogon State College, Bulan Sorsogon. Bulan Campus.
Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Jopet Vincent B. Medalia, and I am going to present the research entitled Feasibility Offering Bachelor of Technical Vocational Teacher Education or BTVN Major in Computer Programming in Sorsogon State College, Bulan Campus. Presently, no longer an institution which is named Sorsogon State College, Bulan, since the college has recently been converted into a university and is now named Sorsogon State University. However, since this study was conducted when the institution was still a college, throughout this presentation, it will be addressed as Sorsogon State College Bulan Campus. The BITVITED, or Bachelor of Technical Vocational Teacher Education Program, major in computer programming, is prescribed under Commission on Higher Education Memorandum Order No. 79, Series of 2017. This curricular program aims to develop graduates who have in teaching computer programming and software development. Graduates of ITV in computer programming may take the licensure examination for teachers or can teach text in the fields of technology and livelihood education and other similar subjects and the IFAN in senior high school. Part of the curricular plans of this is to offer competitive programming in S. Bulan campus, especially Bulan campus, information and communications technology and education college. Hence, this study was adapted to examine the feasibility of offering the program. Specifically, it means the feasibility of offering the new program in terms of a necessity, a possible number of C benefits to stakeholders, the sustainability consonants with the college vision and mission. Number two, it also aims to find the level of readiness of the college in terms of legal basis, faculty complement, and facilities. This research employed the descriptive analytic research design. In the descriptive study, a total of 512 students from 12 secondary schools in the second congressional district of Suarezagon, which is the service area of the CAP served as the respondents, which provided data validated by questionnaire. Meanwhile, documents were utilized and evaluated as part of the analytic aspects of the study. Here are the results of the study. In terms of necessity, the, offer, the offering of the program was to be highly necessary based on the responses of the students. It garnered, it garnered high necessity, descriptive rate in National High School, a second school in the coastal area of Sorsogon. Meanwhile, in terms of possible number of enrolls, the program may generally expect a very high number of colleagues. It's true to six secondary schools, which mostly offer senior high school strands that are allied to programming. Well, one school awarded very low enrollment expectation, which is mainly because senior high school strands offered in this school are focused on cookery and bread and pastry. Now, in terms of sustainability of due program offering, it was found out that the program is highly sustainable in all of the indicators of sustainability, which are facilities competition, and faculty. Now, in terms of faculty complement, the college or the campus has almost complied with all the requirements for faculty complement is on the child memorandum order. Special, specifically for general requirements, the college has complied with the master's degree in education or in allied discipline, relevant master's degree in the sub assigned, and have at least one very satisfactory experience. For professional education, the college is also complied with the with the requirement of having a valid certificate of registration and board of licensure examination for teachers and master's degree in education or in discipline. 
for technology tractors or professors, the college is complied with compliance with the trainings of TESDA. However, the college still needs to comply with having faculty members of master's degree in technology education or its equivalent. There are already faculty members in the campus since it offers ICT and education department or curricular programs. There are already faculty members who have master's degree in information technology and information system. There are also faculty members who have master's degree. However, there is no faculty member yet which has master's degree in technology or education. It's a, hence, the college still needs to comply or still to look for faculty members to be compliant with this particular requirement. Now, in terms of facility, the college is compliant with all the requirements. This is because college offers the um, information and communication technology courses such as BS Information Technology, BS Information System, and BS Computer Science. So hence, all of the facilities needed for the said program, the B programming program, is al are already complied. Hence, we conclude that the offering of Bitivated Major in Computer Programming in SSC Bulan Campus is highly necessary and expects a high possibility of sufficient number of enrollees for the, for the maintenance of the program. The Bitivated program will also provide significant benefits to the different domains of the society, such as the government, the community, priests, and the students. It was also that the offering of Bitivated Major in Computer Programming is highly sustainable in terms of enrollment, faculty, competition, and facility. The program is with the vision and mission of Spurgeon State College and adheres to the pertinent legal basis and foundations. Generally, faculty members are complied with, but the college needs to hire faculty members with master's degree education or its equivalent. The labs and physical facilities required for the offering of the program are already available considering the existence of the IT education and teacher education programs in SSC Bulan campus. Therefore, the offering of Bitivated Major in Programming is found to be feasible. Here are our recommendations. It is recommended for SSC Bulan campus to be offered in the college with the approval of the Commission on Higher Education and, of course, by the Board of Trustees, which is now the Board of Regents. In designing the curriculum, this man should ensure that the needs, demands, and standards along the, list, the different aspects of the program offering are taken into consideration. It is also rec recommended for the college to hire faculty members with master's degree in technology education and retool the IT education and teacher education faculty to become the BTVIT program with the knowledge and attitude needed to become efficient implementers of the program curriculum. program and other policies should be consistent with the provisions set in the Chad Memorandum number 17 series of 2017. Thank you very much. And uh, as of now, there is already a program curriculum drafted or crafted for the Bitivited program, and it has already been assessed or evaluated by the Academic Council of the college and is only now waiting for approval by the Board of Trustees. And hoping that the said program will be offered already in the next coming years so that the students and other stakeholders of the university will be able to benefit from it. Thank you very much. I am Mr. Chapek Vincent Medalia, and uh, thank you very much, CBSUA, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much, Sir Medalia, for sharing with us your research. Our fourth paper presenter is Ma'am Kay Inesugan from Compostela Valley State College. Her research paper is on Discourse Markers in Journalism, a case in Compostela Valley State College, Marasugan. Good day, everyone. 
I am K.D. Nansugan from Compostela Valley State College, and I will be presenting to you my paper entitled Discourse Markers in Journalism in Compostela Valley State College, Maragusan. Outline of the presentation. Rally, objectives, methodology, results and discussion, and conclusion and missions. Rational study. Writing is one of the four macro skills that important tool for learning since it aids learners in including comprehension of views and ideas. It develops capacity for explaining and refining ideas to others and to oneself, according to DECO 2015. However, writing using the foreign language adds another layer of difficulty. Learning to write using the second language is intentional and conscious teaching or direction for each linguistic aspect. The literature intended to investigate the use of DMs in journalism in order to uncover common errors made by students in various genres. It leads to patient understanding of concepts and structure in basic written discourse. Therefore, this study would help both the students and the teachers in CVSC Maragusan use the correct score markers in writing. Objectives of the study First, determine the discourse markers present in basic writings of the second year BSN English students. Second, Identify the common errors in the usage of DMs among the journalistic writings of the second year BSH students. And third, identify the circumstances that prompted the errors in the use of DMs among the journalistic writings of the second year BSH English students. Methodology This case study employed a qualitative design of research using error analysis. Also, this also made use of data coding and thematic analysis for the results. For the sampling, this study utilized a purposeful sampling method selecting 10 second year BS ed English students who are officially enrolled in campus journalism. For the data, in the study are the 30 journalistic writings, one for each genres, namely news, feature, and, and interview responses from the 10 second year BS English students. Analysis. This shows the flow of the gathering for the study. First is to collect the journalistic writings from the respondents, then identify the DMs using frasal or markers. Third is to identify errors using the analysis model. Fourth is the interview using the interview guide. Fifth is the coding of the responses coming from the participants. And sixth, identifying of themes using thematic analysis. The results of the study. Discourse markers in the journalistic writings. Table 1 uses discourse markers model by Fraser 1999. The researcher used this in determines used abundance in the journalistic writings, the news, editorial, and feature articles, respectively. And then, moreover, which is an operative discourse marker, therefore, an inferential discourse marker. And then we have mean and furthermore, which are both elaborative discourse. And we have in conclusion, which is another inferential discourse marker. And we have finally, second, third, thirdly, fourth, and lastly, 
which are all temporal force markers rather. And it shows that the most used DMs are therefore N furthermore. These are so inferential and elaborative DMs. This means that based on their variety, they mostly use DMs for elaboration and basis about something. This is supported by Martinez 2004, who claimed in her study that these two DMs are the most frequently used in writing. Moreover, Kusumayati 2016 also concluded that students who usually use these DMs are the ones who score the best result in their writing tasks. Analysis. Table 2 employed the error analysis model by Corder 1981. This enables her to identify the errors committed by the respondents in the use of DMs in their journalistic writings. The errors committed were categorized according to the different classifications of errors by Al Crochet 2006, which are omission, which is the absence of an object that should appear in a well formed sentence, addition, which is defined as the presence of an item that should not appear in well former utterances, misinformation, the use of wrong type of morphology or structure, and lastly, misordering, which is the incorrectation of a morphoma or a group of morphomas in utterances. Table 2 shows that there are three out of four errors committed by the respondents. The first error is omission. In the sample statements, it may use of the discourse marker meanwhile which is an elaborative discourse marker however it became a phrase rather than a sentence because it is lacking something there is nothing to elaborate in the first place therefore it becomes an error second one is misinformation the sample statement uses the discourse marker however which is here which is contrastive. The statement should be using an inferential DM instead of therefore to make the statement semantically correct. The third error is addition. In the sample statement, there are two discourse markers that are being used initially and on the other hand. Since this excerpt does not use or does not show any contradiction, therefore, the on the other hand here should not be used. This data shows that the students commit mistakes using the correct or appropriate DM to be in a sentence. There is confusion as to functions of each DM. This was supported by Faggy 2015, who claimed that there are individuals who have insufficient knowledge on the selection and use DMs in writing. al Kazraji 2019 further exclaimed that the incorrect use or overuse of DMs negatively affects the transmission of message. Interview results. The questions were designed to identify the respondent familiarity with DMs, how often they use them in their writings, and what prompted to commit errors in using DMs in writing. There are four identified themes based on the responses of the participants. First theme is discourse markers as actors. Based on the answers, most of the responses be as connecting with similar conjunction and the term connectors implies showing cause and effect and combining ideas from one to another. Theme two is the frequency of using markers in journalism. Based on their responses, DMs should always be in writing. These connect their ideas to transitions of topics. The data is written with the knowledge Students use DMs in journalistic writings to emphasize an idea. By using connecting words, they will shorter the flow of the written discourse. Theme number three, confusion among the DMs subclasses. They their statement is evident that they knowledge of DMs. Even though most of them use the in writing, there is still question about the appropriateness of usage. Moreover, it was depicted that they also get confused about which DMs they should use since there are many of them. 
Theme 4 describes as access in writing. Aside from the fact that there were concerns among various types of DMs, another idea came which is problematic. One of the respondents said that he only used DMs to do his writings somewhat appealing to the readers when they would not. The misuse or even other cohesive in writing does not make an article or a written output appealing or fancy. It will only lead to misunderstanding of to be conveyed by the writer to the reader. Speaking, a writer must also consider the target audience or the readers of their output. Conclusion and implication. Conclusion. The participants' responses is that they only have limited knowledge as to what DM and what are the functions in writing. All of them can use DMs in their journal, but not all were competent. Moreover, response orientation with DM was limited to using them as connecting linking words to ideas and show comparison and cause and effect relationship and OPMs with conjunction. Additionally, they often use DMs in writing without really knowing whether they use them correctly or not. This is because they lack prior knowledge. Most students commit mistakes during high school and college. Teachers use other terminologies of D like subordinators, content, positional devices. The data also show that DMs were used their journalistic writings in appropriate sentences. In the error analysis, it is evident that the students are not aware of the types of DMs and their specific functions in the text. The use of DMs for them, aside from what is mentioned previously, makes their sentence appealing. To sum it, basic writing skills employ the procedure of a good written text and depict and value coherence and cohesion. Composing many sentences without considering the cohesive ties fails to, to negotiate the interrelated events intended to be decoded by the reader. Thus, the presence of the journalistic discourse markers is a necessary condition to have a smooth and enjoyable written Implication for practice. For the teachers, there should be further emphasis on discussing the use of DMs in writing, especially its different terms to avoid confusion among the students. For this, they are encouraged to craft strategies to help students cope with the difficulty of engaging them with DMs and identifying their different functions in the text. This helps the students improve their writing skills, things they usually commit in DMs. This study should be their basis for reviewing the syllabus English language teaching guide, particularly in writing for the school administration. With the protocols of the curriculum, the contents of the lesson should be thoroughly evaluated to ensure that this case will be addressed. Likewise, in journalism, this study should be the basis of improving the quality of journalistic things, incorporating the appropriate course markers. Implicant for future researchers. This study was only limited to 10 BS and English students dealing with their errors in DMs in their journalistic writing. This study is essential as a base for further research. In addition, it is recommended to conduct a similar study in a different setting to see if the results are identical or other results. Future researchers may also consider teachers as their respondents to also see their insights about using DMs in writing based on their students' performances. Also, they may use different corpora which, uh, such as essays, narratives, and other areas in technical writings. Thank you very much for listening and God bless. Thank you very much, Ma'am Ma Kay in a Sudan for sharing with us your research. We have just heard from our four presenters of various topics and researchers, researchers on education. Our presenters are, are now ready to answer some queries which you may have relative to their research. But before that, we would like to acknowledge the presence of our first four presenters. May we request them to open their cameras and do 
the heart reacts. Sir Aragon, Sir Beherin, Sir Medalia, and Ma'am Inez again. May we see? The heart reacts now. There you go. We can... Ayan. So, we can see four hearts now in our screen. We've got full of love today. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Um, for those who have their questions for our first four presenters, please mention first their names. And you can write their questions right after their names and you can write it on the chat box. So let's check. We have congratulatory messages from Mam Rose and Mam Malay here in our chat box. Maybe we can start with our first question now for, for Sir, hi, Sir Orogo, not Sir Orogo. Sorry, Sir Marvin. Um, for Sir Marvin, your study is very interesting, sir. May I know if this was conducted before or during the pandemic? So this was conducted before the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Yes, sir. Thank you for that. Um, sir, may you please share with us um, the benefits that the teachers may gain from your study? So my, my second study was, uh, should I refer to my first study or the second? Um, the Educator Stress and Handling Skills Quarter. Thank you, Madam, for clarifying. So there are several benefits that educators could get based from the findings of my study. So there are four main sources of stress identified based on the findings that will give you or give us an idea on how could we deal with these um, sources of stress. Because we know that at present we are um, facing this COVID-19 pandemic, so it acts more on the stress that we might be experiencing at present. So based on the findings, there are recommendations that could be undertaken, such as seminars on time management, um, seminars also in stress coping, that could be implemented by the HR for educators, of course, so that more or less we can cope up with this pressing issue on stress, especially at present time. Because it really adds stress. Thank you very much, Sir Marvin. Well, I guess um, our teachers. <laughs> And me, as part of the CBSEA, I guess, will benefit from the recommendations that you have given in your study. Again, thank you very much, Sir Marvin. Um, let's proceed to Ma'am Lourdes Karin. Ma'am Lourdes. Um, good morning. I'm yeah, having a difficulty for my internet. I'm seeing Dr. V. v okay, Ma'am Lourdes. Well, I guess we, we'll, we'll try to ask the question now. Hopefully, we still have that good internet connection. Um, first of all, your study is very timely, ma'am. Students are, are generally digital natives. <laughs> thus increasing their time in using gadgets. Um, Ma'am, based mm. on the results of your study, what should be the I'm I'm having response? Um, response of the teachers to help to help this kind of students? Ma'am Lourdes, may I just write it on the chat box? Thank you. 
what did the pharmacy science of teachers to help this kind of learners? Hello. 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 Sir, Ma Sir Marvin, can you yes, hear that? Sorry for that. Ma'am Lourdes. Hello, Ma'am Lourdes, are you still in our room? Hi, Ma'am. I'm, I'm back. Hi. Hello. Ma'am Lourdes, um, for our question for yes. your studies. Yes. Hello, Ma'am Lourdes. Yes, Ma'am. Yes, Ma'am. Based on the research um, um, study, what would be the foremost response of how we could help this kind of students? The students who are addicted to gaming online or offline. Mam Lourdes?
um, teaching log or lesson plans for their teaching to improve and to focus in um, emphasizing in teaching our students the importance of using the appropriate discourse markers, especially if our um, our basic writing skills because um, I believe that the correct usage of these course markers are sometimes neglected by everyone. Like um, they are treating these course markers or the um, sometimes you call it transitional devices as something that is not so relevant in writing, but in fact, it is really important. So um, we should always emphasize teaching the career, uh, the appropriate usage of um, these words in writing to improve the cohesion and cohesiveness of the um, technical or writing outputs of our students. And ma'am, please allow me to acknowledge also my advisor for this study, um, Dr. Nelson. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much, Ma'am Kay, and also thank you, Dr. Nelson, for coming up with that um, amazing study for our teachers, especially those who are say, um, teaching, handling English and journalism. Okay, it was a wonderful presentation and engaging discussions for our batch one of for session 1B education. To continue with our paper presentation, let's have our fifth presenter. Ah. Our fifth presenter is Sir Joey M. from Abra State Institute of Science and Technology. His co-researcher is Axel Philip D. Gidang. Their study is on research capability of the graduate school students, a determinant course book framework development. Good day to everyone. Allow me to thank the organizers of this second International Conference on Education, Environment and Agriculture virtual conference. The study that I'm going to present is a collaborative work with Dr. Excel Philip Bigidang, Associate Professor to and Technology Department. Yours truly is Associate Professor Five, the Dean of the Graduate School Dr. Joey Martinez de la Cruz. The title of our study is Research Capability of the Graduate School Students. At the time, as to the background of the study, research is discovery. It is a science that ensures change and development. Research is deemed important across all disciplines. Product lines and services undergo sustained research and development to ensure improved quality. Similarly, lessons being delivered in the classrooms are the results of carefully crafted learning and research to ensure quality education. Risky activity to undertake research. To help better equip trainees, teachers, research enthusiasts, the institutionalization of research capability training programs was introduced. Colan et al. of 2016 stated that research provides a new capability that enhances the organization's agility and stabilizes action research role and practices. The Department of Education encourages teachers to engage in research to support evidence-based practice, decision-making, policy and program development. The Abra State Institute of Sciences and Technology, the only state college in the province, research is one of its core functions. It conducts yearly interagency research fora to share its completed researches. In its graduate school programs, 
one of the core subjects is students who are enrolled in the subject are required to submit a sole authorship or group research paper. The research capability of students is important as it helps them to become better educators. To sustain and improve the research capability of students, this study aims to create a common and organized learning material, a research course book framework. This study aimed to determine the research capability of graduate school students during the school year 2020-2021. Specifically, it obtained the objectives first, determine the graduate school students' knowledge of research, determine the plagiarism rate of the group research outputs of the graduate school students using online plagiarism checker, and third, develop research course book framework. As to the methodology of the study, the respondents of this study were 29 students of the graduate school enrolled in methods of research subject of two consecutive semesters during the school year 2020-2021. To determine the graduate school students' knowledge, attitude, and beliefs towards research and skill in research, the study used frequency and percentile. As to the research capability of students, the instrument on knowledge of research were focused on fundamentals of research, selection of problem or topic, delineation of scope, related literature, assumption, hypothesis, respondent samples, methodology, instrumentation, and statistics. On attitude, and beliefs towards research the food research is important for development difficult threatening requires a special talent learn i am ignorant and about term paper on the skills in research this includes justification for the research rationalizing research selection of scope selection of topic the gathering of literature research of model teaching, research instrumentation, research methodology, and statistical computation were asked from the students. To interpret the self-assessment of the students, the norm below was used. The point of scale 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, with a descriptive rating, excellent, very good, good, fair, and poor. If the point of scale is 5, Equivalent descriptive interpretation, no intervention needed. Point of scale 4, no intervention needed. And point of scale 3, 2, and 1, need intervention. To determine the plagiarism rate of the group research outputs of the respondents, the researchers subjected the introduction, theoretical framework, methodology, results, and discussions, conclusions, and recommendations to plagiarism check. To interpret the plagiarism rate, the study used plagiarism threshold. On the first column, which is all about the category, we have totally copied, mostly copied, partially copied, most are originally work and original work. With a range of 81 to 100% plagiarized, the range of 61 to 80 percent plagiarized, descriptive interpretation is less capable. With the range of 41 to 60 percent plagiarized, descriptive interpretation is capable. And the range of 21 to 40 percent plagiarized, descriptive interpretation is very capable. And from 0 to 20 percent plagiarized, the description is very much capable. As shown on the table on the student's self-assessment on knowledge of research, the 10 areas of the knowledge of research, most items were rated as good and only the hypothesis which is rated very good. On the skewness on the student's self-assessment distribution of points, out of the 10 indicators, only the third indicator which is delineation of the scope as the skewness of negative 0 0.015 to the plagiarism checker 
the research parts that has the highest plagiarism rate is theoretical framework as shown on the all about the fundamentals of research instrumentation and in statistics and the expected output is research course book the plagiarism rate of the group research outputs of respondents the process part two is all about the course book coverage introduction tourist literature review how to cite authors sources of referred journals exercises methodology sources of data instrumentation statistical analysis tools and exercises output course book the plagiarism rate of the subject group research outputs of respondents the process results and discussions presentation of data one is students themselves needing intervention in learning the research course. Second, delineation of scope is an area in the course which requires research introduction. Respondents are not capable of writing a research theoretical framework. Fourth, students are very much capable of writing a research methodology in addition majority of the students are very much capable of writing results and discussions while a minority are less capable students are very much capable of writing conclusions and research recommendations the show students are realized that the conditions of this study. First, a training on research should be conducted with emphasis on the formulation and development of theoretical framework. And lastly, the development of a research course book. Here are the literature cited in our study. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dean Joey de la Cruz, for, for sharing with us your research. And to continue with our presentation, let's have our sixth presenter. Ma'am Jean R. Bansola. Kabita National High School and I think it's from Kabita National High School and I think it's Good day to all education, environment, and agriculture. Learning by Dr. Milagros E. Celedonio. The outline of the presentation are the following. First is introductions, second methodology, third result and discussion, and last is conclusions and recommendations. For the introduction, the pressing issues brought about the COVID-19 pandemic has affected and challenged the educational system 
not only in the Philippines, but the entire globe as a whole. Educators are bombarded with the necessary interventions in order to UNESCO for the Education in 2019. The Department of Education has done its part with the release of Momentum Order Number 12, 2020, otherwise known as Adoption of the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan, school year 2020-2021, in light of the COVID-19 public health emergency, wherein the most important provision stipulated was the adoption of the most essential learning settings for the new. Meals were implemented in crisis and the academic wherein the learning competences were reduced, merged, retained, removed, and modified for the rest. The learning flavor this time is challenging on the part of the educators. Previously, the curriculum guide served as the teacher's resources in making the lesson plan, the guide in order in setting targets and standards for the learning competencies in a certain time. The division as but the province had heard to this mandate, and that the inclusion number four of the Deputy Order number seven of 2020, known as the Learner and Rose as hard before, it turned out that the most preferred recent learning modality of the national The primary goal of this is specifically so to answer the following questions. First, what is the assessment of expert as to the science learning activity sheets as one of the supplemental learning materials in terms of anthropocentric concept, learning skills, activities, reflection, and rubric for scoring? What is the assessment of expert to the recorded videos as supplement to science learning activity sheets in terms of physical dimension? and the structural dimensions. What is the performance level of students in terms of written works and performance tasks? Then, is there a significant difference in science performance between and among different groups of students given with different learning materials? For the methodology, the study utilizes the quasi-experimental design. Participants are not randomly assigned to questions which are to test the effect of supplemental learning materials recorded video discussion. The resulting groups are likely to be similar in some way, which includes students with availability of gadgets, with cellular phones, tablet, laptops, notebook, and
The students were identified as needs remediation based on the result of the accomplished soft learning modules in Science 8, Earthquakes and Holds. So convenient sampling was used as a non community or non random availability of time and willingness to participate, according to Article 2016. The number of sub samples were grouped into three. 25, 25 per dependent group or students with learning data sheets. A supplemental learning material, 25 as independent group or students with learning activity sheets and recorded video discussion as supplemental learning materials given. So the research instrument are the following. The learning activity sheets recorded with cashier or simply the supplemental learning materials are the primary instrument utilized in the study. Soft learning modules are the supplement learning materials to the students in this mode of modular distance learning, which are standardized and released by the division office. The development of the supplemental learning materials were based on the lessons Earthquake and Pulse, Epicenter and Focus of an Earthquake and Intensity, and Shoot of an Earthquake. The instrument based content validated by 12 science experts. Questionnaire checklists were also utilized with indicators in the development of SLAS as per Division Memorandum Number 88 SARS 2020 and Modified Framework of Moore and Swartz 2012, Leisner and Lowe 2012, and Kerner 2000. And development of recorded video discussion include the features of physical dimension and the structural dimensions. The data were analyzed using weighted mean for the SLAS and recorded video discussion, the percentage scores for the level of mastery for the uh, written works the SLAS, the F test by MANOVA for the three groups, the post talking Okay, science learning activity sheets. The table shows that the introductory concept, learning skills, Activities, reflections, and rubrics indicators was assessed expert with 8.44. Qualitatively interpreted as a file. In the recorded video discussion, the physical and structural dimensions was interpreted as blank with a grand mean of 4.44. Showed in this table for the level of performance and written works. It told in this table that the group three or students with slash and RVD has been has or interpreted as moderate performance compared to a group two with failing performance. For the level of performance performance task, it turned out that group two and group three with slash and with slash and RBD, okay, the level of performance is low, while the group one is failing. For the test of deference between the group of students who were assessed when subjected, subjected to SLMs, with integration of slash and with RVD, the F value of 20.95, a 5% level of significance, so the effect size is 0.6% significant difference among the group of students, or 61% of the variance is associated with the mastery of the learning competency. So the honestly of significant difference through the past talk talkie and progress comparison among the students revealed that the group A and group B has a significant difference. Group A and group C has significant difference. Group B and group C has significant difference. It is concluded that science learning is effective in OJ students answer the milks. The recorded discussion is exact in supporting the students in accomplishing their science learning activity sheets. The students' performance level increased the consistent integration of SLAS and RVD. And there is a positive effect of SLAS and RVD on the students' mastery of the most essential learning competency. It is recommended that schools, the version of the province, shall require the heads of the departments and every school to constantly check the implementation of the learning activity sheets to master the most essential learning competency. A more effective action plan recorded with the SLAS to students who need most, especially in this time of distance learning modality, and constant reminder and building of connection between the teacher and the students. And if modular distance learning will be the, mo the most traction, so the 2021 suggests embracing the learning to increase the percentage of the students who are moving towards mastery and increase in their performance.
So that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma'am Gian, for sharing with us your study. And for our seventh presenter, for our seventh presenter, Ma'am Rose A. Arsenio from CGS and RSO Palampon Institute of Technology. Her co-researcher is Philip P. Marquez from Department of Education, Mata Matagub Leyte, Philippines, with their study on challenges in the implementation of technical vocational livelihood track in senior high school. Good day, everyone. I will be presenting a research entitled Challenges in the Implementation of Technical Vocational Livelihood Track in Senior High School. I am Rose A. Arsenu of Palompon Institute of Technology, and my co researcher is Philip Guess of Education. The presentation allows disorder, rationale, or background, theoretical, conceptual framework, methodology. Research results, conclusions, recommendations, and abstract. Rationale. The implementation of the K-12 basic education program has given rise to various issues and concerns. That is why there is a need to determine the perceived challenges experienced by both learners and teachers in the implementation of TVL tracks to come up with proposed interventions to improve the learning delivery system of TVL programs. The theoretical framework. The institutional theory asserts that organizations are characterized by rules and regulations missions must confirm to be successful. Organizations that successfully incorporate environmentally legitimate efforts are more likely to succeed, grow, and survive over time than those that fail to conform. From this perspective, the division of Lady, its internal stakeholders, community, and industries to be viewed as organizations seeking to conform with the regulations and requirements mandated by the Ed in realizing the senior high school program implementation. Implementation is often considered a team sport. Problems arise when some feel committed to implementation, but others do not. The conceptual framework includes the profile of the respondents, both TVL learners and teachers, the learners' ch teachers' challenges in order to come up with proposed interventions to improve the learning delivery system of TVL programs. Methodology. Research design is descriptive correlation. Respondents are TVL graduates, grade 12 years, TVL teachers. Sampling design is purposive. Research instrument is a questionnaire for three groups backed up with an interview. Data gathering procedure is limited face to face and online. Research results covers profile, challenges, and relationship. For the profile of the learner respondents on TVL specialization, majority of them are enrolled in copyry, which is equivalent to 31.52%, and EIM equivalent to 39.35%. The rest are on ICT, CAO, and beauty care. On national certificate level, majority of them are non owners of NC2. On family size of the respondents, most of them belong to six to seven members, constituting 47.2%. Then on estimated monthly income, it constitutes 77.2% for 10,000 pesos and below. For the teacher respondents profile, 
majority of them are bachelor, bachelor's degree holder with well, licensure exams. Then for a number of years teaching, majority of them are having 2.1 to 3 years teaching experience, which is equivalent to 44.4%. On employment status, majority of them are regular. And on TVL trainings and seminars attended, only 22.2% attended TVL trainings. And the biggest percentage, 77.8%, have not yet attended TVL trainings. Challenges encountered in the of TVL tracks as stressed by the learners. On school studies, Tools, equipment, and paraphernalia, experience of teachers, safety measures, these are considered as low challenge. And these are supported by the different researchers. On challenges encountered in the implementation of VL drugs as perceived by the teachers, variable this was considered very low challenge. Tools equipment and paraphernalia, very low challenge. Teaching and learning materials, low challenge. Budget allocations, moderate challenge. Safety mesh, low challenge. Administrative support, very low challenge. Stakeholder support, low challenge. Correlation between the profile of learners and the challenges encountered in DBL tracks. For school facilities, On tools with and paraphernalia, the same, no significant relationship. Learning materials is related with specialization and national certificates. Expertise of teachers has no significant relationship with the profile learners. And on safety measures, related specialization. Correlation is significant at 0 0.05 level for our values above. 0.145 for relationships between file challenges in the TBL track. On school fees, there's no relationship with the profile tool and pernalian also. Learning materials is related with the number of years in TGL, budget appropriations. No significant relationship. Safety measures is related with education. And support is related with employment status. Correlation is significant at 0 0.05 for our values of 0.666 and below negative 0.66. Conclusion. In the technical vocational livelihood track in the high school, challenges come up part of the program implementation. A forward-looking outlook from beneficiaries and implementers to make it successful. The study participants should respond third greater report, exceed greater persistence for behavior, and more effective implementation. When individual and organizational readiness for change I they conform to environmentally limited elements. With this, they are like seed, grow and survive over time than those that fail to conform. Realizing that skilled workers are needed and are taking a big portion of the whole world in a nation is necessary for the implementers to think seriously about it and how this type of education can play a main role in the economy. Recommendations. The deep ed should appropriate and quit material resource like equipment and learning materials to ensure effective implementation of people in schools. School administrators should assess with the use of checklists on the needs of their classrooms, laboratories, and find ways to provide those needs. School administrators should regularly assess the training needs of their TBL teachers, send them training for the teachers to become subject matter experts. Teachers must be wise in giving activities that can develop the skill. In this way, when there is 
a lack of materials, learners can further identify the severity of the challenges encountered in the implementation of PBL tracks in senior high school. Impact outcomes of the study. It is an eye opener to the school administrators about the challenges experienced in schools. With the result of the study, it gives real situation and we will be able to create necessary interventions and provide solutions. With this, they can review their existing programs or create new one that helps address the needs of their school. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ma'am Rose Arsenio, for sharing with us your, your research. And to proceed with our eighth presenter, we have Sir Ramon Armonte. from Central Legal State University of Agriculture, Pasakao Campus. He will be presenting his research paper titled mm -hmm. Determinants of the NCAT Performance in Mathematics and English of Selected Millennial Students. Um, Ma'am Cherry, good morning. Uh, yes? May I ask Ma'am Cherry? Yes, sir. Uh, Ma'am, uh, please let me ask uh mga kwan ilang presenter po ako ngayon ma'am or maybe this afternoon sir nami ah uh, birami julie and maria daw po ma'am come again sir what's the, the name ah uh, julie birami and maria daw I'm sorry, sir, but we do, we do not have Mom, Mom Julie, right after this uh, presentation from, from Sir Monte, will be the open forum, and right after that, we'll have the last batch, which are the five presenters. Let me read the five presenters for the last batch. First is Alvin M. Mahawan. Second is Nick Shirley, third is Sir Marben Polobo, fourth is Ma'am Hanila Nicolas, and lastly would be Sir Christopher A. Malad. Uh, because my schedule is, Ma'am, is 10, 10, 10 to 10, 20, Ma'am. Uh, sir Barani, may we know the your session? Uh, this is part of one, Ma'am. A, uh, A1. Uh, my name is, is written here, ma'am. Um, this is session 1B, sir, but um, Will you please give us your complete name in the chat box and then we'll help you um, locate your session room through the chat box. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. And going back again once again let's have sir ramon montes um, presentation this evening good day everyone my research is entitled determinants of the NCI performance in mathematics and english of selected yeah. Mathematics, science, and English are foundation subjects for lifelong learning. So this research helps to assist teachers and curriculum planners in enhancing their performance, particularly along the areas of mathematics and English. So these are the objectives of this study. This study aims to determine the selected personal, home, and school characteristics associated with the National Career Assessment Examination Performance 
in mathematics and English of junior high, high school students of Universidad de San Isabel Basic Education Department. Specifically, the study determines junior high school students' personal, home, and school characteristics regarding IQ and final grade in mathematics and English, their parents' occupation and income level, and the teacher's experience in highest educational attainment. It also aimed to evaluate the performance level of the students in mathematics and English based on the inquiry results and investigate the significant relationship between the selected characteristics and inquiry performance. For methodology and the research design, this study used the descriptive, correlational, and predictive methods of research. For methods and procedures, the primary data used in this study were the result of the National Career Assessment Examination, or NCAI, for mathematics, English, IQ level of the respondents, parents and teachers in information, and final grades in mathematics and English. For methodology, the universal population of this study included all the 309 junior high school students of Universidad de Santa Isabel, basic education department. Under data analysis, analysis of the data gathered utilized percentage, mean, person product moment correlation, mm -hmm. regression analysis, and chi square test. For results and discussion, understatement of the problem number one. What are the personal, home, and school characteristics of junior high school students regarding IQ and final grades in mathematics and English, parents' occupation, and income level, and teachers' experience and highest educational attainment respectively? Table one shows students' IQ level. Revealed 227 respondents or 73.46 had average IQ level. 47 students or 15.21% had above average level. 33 or 10.70% below average. And 2 or 0 0.65 had a superior. IQ level. The findings meant most junior high school students had average mental ability, whereas the smallest percentage had superior IQ. Results further revealed that high school juniors are average learners. Table 1B shows the final grades in mathematics and English. The data indicate that most respondents had an average performance level, while the least had a very high performance level. Table 1C presents home characteristics along parents' occupation. Data shows that self-employed parents tap parental occupation. At the same time, private employment comes least among the mothers, while government employment is for the fathers. Table 1D reveals on monthly gross income level of the respondents' parents. It's all based from this data that majority of the respondents' parents had a low monthly income. However, despite the economic inadequacy, they could still afford to send their children to a private school. Table 1E shows the data on school characteristics along teaching experience. 
the result based on this data, majority of the mathematics and English teachers are young in the profession. Table 1F illustrates the teacher's highest educational attainment. Based on the results, the majority of this group of teachers were also taking graduate studies, helping to equip themselves with richer knowledge and teaching skills to help raise the academic performance of their students. For conclusion, students had average IQ as well as academic performance levels in mathematics and English. Most mothers and fathers who had low income were self-employed. Majority of the mathematics and English teachers were young in the service. Recommendations, number one, students should be motivated and encouraged to study hard and monitor the progress of their academic performance, particularly in mathematics and English. Two, conduct regular parents' conferences and home visitations to discuss children's performances. Number three, the university should support its teachers to pursue postgraduate studies along their fields of specialization to improve and enhance our teaching skills and competencies. For a statement of problem number two, what is the performance level of the students in mathematics and English based on the entire results? Table two shows performance level of students in based on the entire results. So in mathematics, Data revealed an overall mean of 62.76 or an average performance level. In English, data revealed the overall mean 80.06 also. Conclusion, students had an average performance level in both mathematics and English, although English had a higher rating than mathematics. Recommendations, mathematics and English classes must provide intensive skills exercises to master the higher order thinking skills in communication, problem solving, and decision making in periodic examinations of students. For statement of problem number three, are there significant relationships between the selected characteristics and in-kite performance? Findings, there is a significant relationship between some personal, home, and school characteristics and in-kite performance. Conclusion, in-kite performance in both mathematics and English was significantly influenced by these factors. Parents' occupation, family income level, teachers' teaching experience, and highest educational attainment, mother's occupation, and father's occupation with mathematics performance but not less. Recommendations. One, upgrade contents in instructional pedagogy for mathematics and English. Number two, parents should have quality time in monitoring the study habits of their children. Number three, mathematics and English teachers should continue in graduate studies and attend related trainings. So that would be all. Thank you for listening. God bless everyone. Thank you very much, Sir, Sir Monte, you. for sharing with us your research. We have just watched and heard from our second batch of presenters, various topics, and 
researches on education. I guess they are now ready to answer your queries relative to their For that, we would like to, to acknowledge the presence of our presenters. May we request them to open their cameras and do the heart react. We have um, Sir Joey De La Cruz, Ma'am Jean Bansuelo, Ma'am Rose Arsenio, and Sir Ramon Monte. There you go. We can see two hearts, Ma'am Rose. May we see your heart react there? Okay. Sige. Um, I guess um, Sir Joey De La Cruz is not on the meeting room, so we'll immediately proceed with Ma'am Jean Bansuelo. But let me check first in the chat box for the questions. So far, none. Okay. Um, Ma'am Jean, congratulations for coming up with your wonderful supplemental material. Um, there's a lot of it. And really, future researchers are are indeed innovating. Um, for our question, ma'am, what was your inspiration in in developing these supplementary materials? So my motivation Ma'am Jean, we cannot hear you for all right. So my motivation, ma'am, in crafting this uh, studies, the recent uh, learning delivery modality of our division. And of course, the locality of the institution where I belong. Thank you very much, Ma'am Alcelo. And for Ma'am Rose Arsen Arsenio, thank you very much, Ma'am. Um, you, you have a very stimulating study, Ma'am Rose, um, that gave us an idea of the challenges of teachers and students in the implementation of PBL in senior high school. Uh, Ma'am, how do you think the results of your study may benefit the teachers in senior high school? It will benefit them, Ma'am, by looking into the challenges in advance so that they can prepare ahead what will be the consequent or subsequent solutions if ever they will encounter similar problems. So they will become proactive in dealing with the challenges. I agree, Ma'am Arsenio. Thank you very much, Pa. And to proceed with Sir Ramon Monte, Sir Ramon, congratulations. You have an extensive assessment of the NCAE of the performance of our millennial students. Sir, what could be the greatest contribution of your study to the parents of these millennial students? Okay, good day, everyone. Thank you for that question, Dr. Cherry Love. Okay, so as we all know that, uh, uh, just to give you an information, the data was gathered before the pandemic. So, so if you're going to adapt the result of this study, uh, of course, we need to, for the parents, especially for the parents, we need a closer follow-up of our children. Okay, so nowadays, uh, pandemic is very, you know, uh, it's totally different from our previous face-to-face -face interaction. So that's why uh, nowadays we need to, to guide our students, you know, uh, the proper monitoring of the students, of your children, uh, or the parents of, uh, of their children, I mean, to, you know, monitor the performance of their children, not only in mathematics and English, but in all subject areas. Thank you, Dr. Cherry Lam. Thank you very much, Sir Ramon Monte. Um, it was a wonderful presentation and engaging discussions from our second batch of presenters. We have from the chat box, the congratulatory messages to our presenters. One again, once again, congratulations to 
to our presenters, Sir Joey De La Cruz, Ma'am Chean, Ma'am Rose, and Sir Ramon Monte. And to continue with our last batch of presenters, let's have our ninth presenter. For our ninth presenter, we'll have Sir Alvin Mahawan and with Mamelagros Celedonio as his co-researcher from Dr. Emilio B. Espinosa Senior Memorial State College of Agriculture and Technology. David, Sir Alvin will be presenting their research entitled Effectiveness of Computer-Aided Instruction on Students' Conceptual Understanding in Life Science. Good day to everyone, especially to the participants of the Second International Conference on Education, Environment and Agriculture organized by the Central Bicol State University of Agriculture. This day, I'll be presenting to you our research study titled Effectiveness of Computer-Aided Instruction on Students' Conceptual Understanding in Life Science together with Dr. Milagros E. Celedoni. First, let's have the introduction of the study. The 21st century entails a lot of challenges in the educational system. National Achievement Test in Mathematics and Science Result from 2000 to 2010. The senior high school teachers are confronted with the challenges for the students to master the learning competencies in life science subjects. Rapid Order Number 72 Series of 2011 showed that roughly 5,600 secondary schools are 61.10% scored within the lower average in national achievement test. Students' achievement in life science, as with other discipline, is an indicator on the students' conceptual understanding and mastery of the learning competencies. Computer-based instruction provides a number of alternatives to the students, such as Visualization of abstract concepts, according to Balthazar and Manibana, 2002. Abstract concepts are the reason why the students can hardly understand the lesson, and the use of computer aided instruction packages yields an effective attainment of conceptual understanding and mastery of the competencies, according to Tabat and Wald in 2011. Let's Let's proceed with the framework of the study. The framework of the study follows the COM system, which is the input process and out design. At first, there is, there is the development and assessment of the lessons that includes the activities of the diagnosis on the students' pre-test competencies in bioenergetics, which includes the topics structures and functions of cells, photosynthesis and energy flow, utilization of energy. After that, there, there is the lesson implementation wherein there is a pilot testing prior to the conduct of the activity or the classroom discussion based from the result of the evaluated and assessed by the experts of the developed lesson. That includes the methodologies, the integration of the computer-aided instruction in grade 11 life science subject, and followed by the gathering of the primary data and the interpretation of the data. And the output would be the effect on conceptual understanding. That is the life science post-test academic achievement. And the framework would be a computer-aided instruction packages in lesson plan development. The purpose of the research is that primarily it determines the effectiveness of computer-aided instruction on students' conceptual understanding, which is specifically sought to answer the following questions. What lessons may be developed using computer-aided instruction? What is the assessment of experts in terms of congruency of objectives, learning experiences, assessment of learning outcomes, features of computer-aided instruction, and what is the effect of computer-aided instruction in teaching life science in terms of conceptual learning? The methodology of this study includes the research design is that the study utilized the pre-experimental method 
the pre-test and post-test design was then adopted for the participants included in the studies are the 27 senior high school students which are conveniently selected research instrument which mainly used to, to gather the primary data to come up with the results includes the bioenergetics achievement test or the BOT, the evaluated developed lesson plan and a questionnaire checklist to guide for the phase and content validation of the experts. And in terms of the data analysis, the following are the descriptive and statistical tools being utilized in the study. The arithmetic mean or the weighted mean which are then used to compute the results of the experts' assessment of the tools being used. Based on the idea of Lapada in Lapada in 2011 that the learning gain scores that associated to the actual gain concept based on the competencies established on a certain lesson. Here, 20 was used for reliability test of the bioenergetics achievement and the test paired sample for means to determine the, the difference between the performance of the pre-test and the post-test result of the students. Let's proceed with the results and discussion. First is that the development of the lesson plan. Now, the developed lesson plans includes the following lessons, the structure and functions of cells, photosynthesis and energy flow, and the utility of energy. This is anchored to Deped Order Number 42 series of 2016 that in the development of the lesson, inquiry-based approach follows the 7E format, the 7E format in the development of the lesson. Now to give you the rundown of the computer-aided packages integrated in, in the nine developed lessons, and these are the packages for lesson one, lesson two, four, lesson four, lesson five, six, seven, eight, and nine. These are open access, widely available on the, on the web, which are then integrated and tested its features. If these are applicable to be integrated in the lesson in 70s format, is specifically on the explore part of. Let's proceed with the assessment of lesson plan as to its components. These are the indicators on the congruence of lesson objectives, learning experiences, assessment of learning outcomes, features of computer aided instruction, which obtained a grand mean of 4.69, which put in descriptive interpretation as excellent. Learning gain score of 3.18 indicates that the higher positive LGS means an increase in the student's conceptual understanding. This table presents the effect of computer-aided instruction on students' conceptual understanding in life science. The researcher used the pre-test and post-test results as the basis on its effect looking into the learning gain in each of the lessons. The learning gain score was used to determine the which of the topics have much gained out of the passable total that this could have gained from the pre-test and post-test. And this represents the conceptual understanding of the students before and after the conduct of classroom discussion with integration of computer-aided instruction in the lesson, as shown in the, in the table that the post-test got a higher mean score of 6.48 and the pre-test got a mean score of 3.30. A paired sample t-test was computed to compare the performance between the pre-test and post-test of grade 11 students in life science subject. The result of the t-test proved that the computer-aided instruction used in the study has an effect on the student's conceptual understanding in the topics of bioenergetics. The significant mean difference gap in the pre-test and post-test all support in the overall performance of the grade 11 students. The effectiveness of computer-aided instruction on students' conceptual understanding was determined by the increase in the post-test. The test of mean difference between the pre-test and post-test scores of students showed a significant result. Hence, there is significant difference between the students' scores in the pre-test and post-test that measures the effectiveness of CHI on students' conceptual understanding in life science. Let's proceed with the conclusion. Findings of the study suggest that CHI packages are one innovation and interactive tool in teaching bioenergetics. It has also found out that students are more interested to learn when exposed to an educational technology. However, the students are restricted with some factors in learning the lesson related to intrinsic motivation, social economic status, and readiness to learn. As noted in the previous study, computer-aided instruction is an excellent tool to enrich the student's interest and improve their understanding to the concept. Thus, teachers are challenged on how to deeply extend educational technology in remote areas that would elevate the student's level of understanding. Therefore, the developed nine daily lesson plans with integration of computer-aided instruction packages are excellent and effective in teaching bioenergetics lesson. It is excellent in terms of congruence of lesson objectives, learning experiences, assessment of learning outcomes, and the features of computer-aided instruction packages. There is an increase in the learning gain scores, which relate to the student's conceptual understanding as it also increases. Further, this increase is likely improved the student's performance in the mastery of the learning competencies 
which is shown in the significant difference between the performance in the pre-test and post-test of the students. For recommendations, this output shall serve as a model for lesson development of senior high school teachers. Masbati Catholic Education, in partnership with the Department of Education, Division of Masbati, especially the Education Program Supervisor in Science, shall revisit and upscale science teachers through foreign conference seminars and workshops in preparation for the creation of lesson plan development team, which will be composed of daily lesson plan writers, demonstrator teachers, layout artists, editors, and validators in the senior high school with the integration of computer-aided instruction. The lesson plan writers shall ascertain that the components of the lesson are patterned as to the congruence of lesson objectives, learning experiences, and assessment of learning outcomes. Further, science-enhancing and student-centered teaching strategies shall be applied to ascertain the improvement of the student's conceptual understanding. Finally, a thorough establishment of correlational and significant results among groups of students, the controlled and experimental, might be sought and testing the effectiveness of GAI might be enriched. The author's information. Thank you very much and once again, good day to everyone. Thank you also, Sir, Sir Alvin Mahawat, for sharing with us your study. To continue, our 10th presenter is Sir Rexter Lee C. Versota. Ma'am Bernadette J. Nanual is his co-researcher. Both from Institute of Agriculture and Life Sciences, Davao Oriental State University. Rexter Lee will be presenting their study titled Flipping Force and Motion Lesson, Investigating Pre-Service Teachers' Motivation and Achievement in Physics. Good day, everyone. I am Rick Sturdy Verzosa, a physical science faculty member of Davao Oriental State University. Allow me to present our paper entitled Flipping Force and Motion Lessons, Investigating Pre-Service Teachers' Motivation and Achievement in Physics. Physics is regarded as complex and challenging force among students. With this subject, students have difficulty in establishing connection between physical concepts and real life situation. Hence, they are likely to develop disinterest in the subject and unable to un understand the topics. To increase student interest in academic achievement in physics, Educators and researchers seek some suitable teaching approaches that can be used for more engaging and effective learning. In recent years, one instructional model that has taken the educational stage as an innovative approach is flipped classroom. In flipped classroom, the students are the ones who obtain the content through watching online or offline lecture videos and readings before coming to class, thus freeing the scheduled class time for active learning activities, such as group discussion and solving complex problems. While this instructional approach had gained popularity in higher education, there is still lack of empirical research regarding its effect on academic performance and motivation of students. of these studies is to determine the effect of flipped classroom approach on student motivation and academic achievement in an algebra-based introductory physics course. This study conducted can add to existing body information on this aspect and to consider this instructional strategy in promoting learning and enhanced teaching in science education, particularly in physics. This slide shows the conceptual framework of the study. The independent variable is the instructional approach used by the teacher as either flipped classroom or the lecture-based approach. 
The dependent variables in this study are the student motivation scores and concept test scores in physics. It was presumed in this study that the flipped classroom teaching approach promotes students' motivation to learn physics and his or her achievement. A mediating variable, which is the student profile, is included that might affect and explain the relationship between the two variables. These are the hypotheses examined in the study. First, there is no significant difference in motivation scores between students in flipped classroom and students in conventional classroom. Second, there is no significant difference in concept test scores between students in flipped classroom and students in conventional classroom. For materials and methods, the present study used quasi-experimental design. The design is appropriate due to manipulation of the ind independent variable, which is the instructional approach used by the teacher and also the use of control group in the study. This design is also used due to lack of randomization of the student sample. The respondents in this study were third year Bachelor of Elementary Education students enrolled in algebra-based introductory physics class, Oriental State College of Science and Technology during the second semester of academic year 2018-2019. Respondent existing classes. Using TOSCOIN, one class was assigned as control group and the other one as experimental group. The research instruments used are force and motion concept tests, physics motivation questionnaire, and self-regulated learning questionnaire. These adopted questionnaires were validated by experts and pilot tested to establish validity and reliability of the test. Structure and setting of the study. The students in the experimental group were exposed to flipped classroom approach where learning of content material is done outside the class and active learning activities like peer instruction and group dynamics was done within the classroom. Students were given lecture materials such as electronic copy of topics, lecture videos, and electronic books. On the other hand, students in the control group were given the lecture-based instructional approach for delivering the physics content. For ethical considerations, permission to conduct the study was granted by the academic institution. Respondents' anonymity was kept confidential throughout the study by using codes in the questionnaires. Also, respondents were not audiographed or videographed during the conduct of the study. Aside from physics motivation scores and concept test scores, the additional data collected were age, sex, previous grade or previous grade point average in math, and self-regulated learning scores that served as covariates used in matching. Before testing the hypothesis, a matching method was performed using propensity score matching or PSM to pair respondents from the experimental group and the control group. This was done using covariates to provide a good estimate on the effect of flipped classroom. An independent t-test was used to examine the two hypotheses described previously. Results and discussion. Results from propensity score matching produced 28 match pairs that were included in the statistical analysis. T-test results indicated that there was no statistically significant difference 
in the motivation scores of students in the flipped classroom as compared to the students in conventional classroom. Results also showed that there was no statistically significant difference in the concept test scores of the students in the flipped classroom as compared to the students in the conventional classroom. Implications. The implementation of flipped classroom instructional model did not have a statistically significant effect on student motivation and academic performance of students in physics. The results of the study may also denote that flipped classroom may not be one size fits all, fits all instructional strategy when implemented in any classroom. But teachers may explore flipped classroom approach as an alternative to lecture-based method to promote active learning for the students. That's all, and thank you for your time and attention. Thank you very much, Sir Alvin. I saw Rick Sir Lee Vertosa for sharing your study with us. And let's have now our 11th, 11th presenter, Sir Marvin A. Orogo from Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, Pasacal Campus. He will be presenting his study titled, Awareness and Level of Satisfaction of Students with the Support Services at CBSUA Pasacal. Good day, everyone and welcome to second international conference on education good day everyone and welcome to second international conference on education environment and agriculture 2021 My study was all about awareness and level of satisfaction of students with the support services at CBSUA Pasacao. I'm Marvin A. Orogo, an instructor too at CBSUA. The general objective of this study Students of CBSUA PAS study was guided by the following objectives. Number one, determine the profile of the respondents. Number two, identify the level of awareness of the students of CBSUA PASACAO with the support services offered by the university. And number three, determine if there's a significant difference in the level of awareness of male and female students with the support services offered by the university. Number four, identify the level of satisfaction of the students of CBSUA Pasacao with the support services offered by the university. Number five, determine if there is a significant difference in the level of satisfaction of male and female students with the support services offered by the university. For the statement of the problem, this undertaking determines the level of awareness and satisfaction of the students with the support services at CBSUA Pasacao. Specifically, it sought answers to the following question. Number one, what the profile of the respondents? Number two, what is the level of awareness of the students 
of CBS UAE Pasakaw with the support services offered by the university. Number three, is there a significant difference in the level of awareness of male and female students with the support services offered by the university? Number four, what is the level of Number five, is there a significant difference in the level of satisfaction of male and female students with the support services offered by the university? Speaking about the demographic profile of CBSUA Pasakao, so these undertakings examined the demographic profile of the respondents that includes sex and age. So speaking about sex, it was reflected data students in speaking about age. It was revealed by the figured computation at majority of the respondents are good day everyone and welcome to second international conference on education environment and agriculture 2021. Good day, everyone, and welcome to Second International Conference on Education, Environment, and Agriculture 2021. Speaking about the level of satisfaction, it was revealed that the respondents was highly aware or highly satisfied with the support services delivered by the institution. With regards to the significant difference in the level of satisfaction, it was shown on by the data that generally there is no significant difference in the level of satisfaction of the students with the support services offered by the university. And these are the conclusions of my study. Majority of the students in CBSUA Pasakao are female and young. Respondents are highly aware that there exist support services for students provided by the institution. And the level of awareness of male and female students regarding the support services delivered by the institution was statistically the same. Speaking about the 
students are highly satisfied with the support services for students provided by the institution. The level of satisfaction of male and female students regarding the support services delivered by the institution was statistically the same. And these are the recommendations based on the finding. Accepting more male enrollees might be considered by the university to balance the number of male and female students. Maximizing the potentials of young students might be considered by the administration for the welfare of the university. Orientation for students on their roles in the university could be considered to maximize their participation in different programs and activities. Also, as officers, deans, and program chair in the colleges might consider revisiting the programs and activities to consider the emerging trends in gender role as relates to instruction or I mean institutional improvement. Information dissemination through pamphlets, brochure, online advertisements, and other related means regarding the support services delivered by the institution might be considered by the OSAS to maintain and enhance the level of awareness of the students. In order to sustain the high level of awareness of both male and female regarding the support services, annual orientation program might be conducted. Proper information dissemination campaign might be spearheaded by the OSAS in order to publicize the projects, programs, and services provided by the institution. Continuous monitoring of the results for the student satisfaction survey instrument regarding the support services delivered by the institution might be considered by the OSAS to maintain and enhance the level of satisfaction of the students. Trainings and seminar for the staff in OSAS and other units regarding the refinement and sustaining good performance in work field might be considered by the administration. For the research results, speaking about the Thank you very much, Sir Arago, for sharing with us your, your research. And to proceed with our 12 presenter, we'll have Ma'am Hanilet J. Nicolas. Her co researcher is Ma'am Jaana Marie S. Bradesina, both from College of Agriculture, Bulacan Agricultural State College. Ma'am Hanilet will be presenting their paper titled development and evaluation of learning modules in rabbit production. Good day to all. This is Dr. Hanele Nicolas, Associate Professor Clay of Bulacan Agricultural State College. It is my honor to discuss our uh, research entitled Development and Evaluation of Learning Modules in Rabbit Production. Rabbit is a commodity trust for research development and extension of Bulacan Agricultural State College. For BS Agriculture major in Animal Science, the subject rabbit production is offered as a major and this is a pioneering subject on production of meat-type rabbits all over the country. 
instructional materials are important tools in making the teaching learning process effective. Not all courses have available textbooks, while those from foreign authors are devoid, devoid of Philippine setting. Evaluation or validation are conducted as research studies in Philippine higher education institutions to continuously develop instructional materials developed by their faculty. This study aimed to develop learning modules in the course rapid production and to determine the acceptability of the modules for its student users and its effectiveness in improving student academic performance. The uh, study utilized the ADI design, uh, ADI instructional design model, meaning analysis design and development implement evaluation. This is a uh, descriptive developmental and evaluative research with 140 third year BSA students as respondents. For the acceptability testing, in an adapted and modified questionnaire was used with a Likert scale technique of 1 to 5 and mean as the uh, statistical test. For effectiveness, Pre-test and post-test was used with paired t-test for the analysis. For the first part of the ADI methodology, for analysis, it was found that there is a need to focus the modules on basic information and rapid production from the history and background, advantages and disadvantages, basic information and different body systems, management aspects, record keeping and processing of rabbit meat and other products. For the design part, initial list of topics was made with the accompanying objectives. Then students and faculty who have background knowledge or are engaged in rabbit production gave inputs for the topics to be included in the modules. The initial list was revised based on their inputs. The initial plan delivery form for the modules is by print to be discussed in a face-to-face -face mode. However, since it was not possible due to the pandemic, the modules were converted into a portable document format or PDF form just before implementation so that it can easily be shared online to the students. For the development part, continuous writing and revising was done for a period of 18 months, incorporating the results from analysis and design phases, as well as some materials from relevant books and scientific references and ideas from local webinars on rabbit production and social media posts of rabbit farmers. This phase resulted in 10 learning modules. So uh, these were the modules. Introduction to rabbit production, anatomy and physiology of rabbits, grades and types of rabbits, selection and breeding management, care of pregnant or lactating dose and young rabbits, feeding and nutrition, housing management, health management, dressing and meat processing, and finally, record keeping and financial management. For the implementation, the uh, teaching and learning processes use the following messenger and Google Classroom for sending of the PDF form of modules and submission of student assignments and Google Meet for the online discussion. In the beginning of the midterm and final periods, students were given play tests to determine their initial knowledge on the subject. And for the term examinations, these were given in the end to determine the, the accumulated knowledge from the modules and discussions and the increase in knowledge compared to the play test results. For the evaluation by students on the learning modules in terms of objectives, a, a mean of 3.90 was uh, the right for the objectives, meaning moderately acceptable, and the four indicators range from 3.86 to 3.85 to 3.94. In terms of content, organization, and usability, the mean derived was 3.84, meaning moderately acceptable. The indicators scored 3.80 to 3.88. So all were uh, moderately acceptable. And in terms of language, the students rated them 
moderately acceptable with a range of uh, 3.73 to 3.83 amount of four indicators. The grant name for all the uh, criteria for, for evaluation was 3.85, also meaning moderately acceptable. So uh, from one to five, most of the students uh, scored almost four in the uh, indicators. So they were satisfied with the modules that they received. However, the uh, faculty involved in the module um, still wanted to improve the modules before submitting them to the Instructional Materials Committee of the college. The, after the uh, initial evaluation of the first batch of students in August to December 2020, from uh, January 2021, the faculty um, included some more topics and uh, further improved the content of their modules. In terms of the uh, evaluation of effectiveness, both in midterm and final periods, the weight test from 58 to 85, the weight test scores are all uh, increased during the post-test. So from 58 to 85 during the midterm and 66 to 91 during the uh, final period. Mean difference was 27 during the midterm period and 25 during the final period. And uh, with a T value of 24.82 during the midterms, 35.05 during the finals, and the p-value derived was 0. Point was highly significant, meaning they are uh, even higher than, uh, even they are even lower than 0. 0.01. So uh, the um, modules were found to be very effective in uh, increasing the knowledge of the students in the subject. Um, this is uh, quite expected because most of the students had no internet connection at home or they had very uh, slow internet connection. Therefore, uh, their only source of knowledge for the uh, course was were the modules. So for the conclusion, a set of instructional materials made of 10 learning modules in the course rapid production was developed and evaluated following the RD instructional design model. Analysis, design, and development of the modules were based on the needs of the institution and learners and the current practice of rabbit racers in the locality. Evaluation of acceptability showed that student users rated the modules with moderate acceptability in terms of objectives, content, organization, and usability, and language. The learning modules were found effective in increasing the knowledge of students as shown by the pre-test and post-test results for the midterm and final period. For the recommendations, the learning modules may be subjected to continuous evaluation by the next batch of student and faculty users. As more researches on rabbit production in the country are conducted, the contents of the modules may be enhanced using more updated research based production practices. Similar studies on the development, acceptability, and effectiveness of instructional materials may be conducted by tertiary education faculty toward the attainment of quality and relevant education for the future generations. So, for the references, these were the references used in the study. So that's all. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you very much, Dr. Hanelet, for sharing with us your, your study. And to proceed with our 13th presenter, Sir Christopher A. Malay, his Co-researchers are Simon Carl Cabanban, Chan Andre S. Hoko, Bea Angela T. Montalban, 
and Kurt Chan A. Kelonia. They are from International School, Lyceum of the Philippines, University, Cavite. Sir Christopher will be presenting their paper titled Online Learning Preparedness Among Selected Senior High School Students During the COVID-19 Pandemic. Good day, everyone. I am pleased to participate in this year's second international conference on education, environment, and agriculture as a virtual presenter. I'll be presenting our research entitled Online Learning Preparedness Among Selected Senior High School Students During the COVID-19 Pandemic. I am Christopher A. Malay, a senior high school teacher from the International School of the Lyceum of the Philippines University in Calcutta. For my presentation, I'll be discussing a brief background of the study, our research objectives and procedures, as well as the important results and our conclusion. Since the start of COVID-19 pandemic, many countries have been closing their borders and imposing lockdowns to prevent the spread of the virus. Because of these actions, schools are forced to temporarily close its doors to prevent the transmission of the virus among its learners and other school personnel. As lockdowns and school activities continue to be prohibited, educational institutions started to transition from face-to-face -face learning environment to an online learning environment. This move allowed the continuity of learning among the stakeholders. In the Philippines, the Department of Education hit the call for providing accessible delivery of instructions among diverse learners. Several modalities were introduced, such as self-learning module, e-modules, digital packets, and online learning. Online learning was done through a synchronous and synchronous phase. While many students choose self-learning modules and other modalities, online learning allowed a greater flexibility, especially among learners who can perform both tasks in school and at home. Thus, many students, especially in the private education sector, choose this learning environment. The study focused on determining the online learning readiness of selected senior high school students in a private institution in Cavite. Specifically, it aims to determine the five dimensions of online learning, such as computer internet self-efficacy, self-directed learning, learner control, motivation for learning, and online communication self-efficacy. The study also aims to determine whether the online learning readiness significantly differ in terms of gender, grade level, track or strand, and location or district. To add behavioral intention to continue, as well as overall learning experience and learning satisfaction towards online class were also assessed. And lastly, identification of problems related to online learning. For the research procedure, we requested permission from the school administration to conduct this study. We also sought permission from the authors of the online learning readiness scale prior to the implementation of the study. An e-survey version of the questionnaire containing the background of the study, respondent's demographic profile, and an answer to the 18th questionnaire about the online learning readiness was prepared using Google Forms. And lastly, data gathering and analysis was done using SPSS version 21. Normality test was done using shapiro wilk test, and non-parametric tests like man with knee, Kruskal-Wallis, and effect size was utilized. A total of 250 students voluntarily participated in the online survey. Majority of the respondents were females and from grade 12. In terms of trap and strand, a greater number of respondents are from the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics strand. Based on the distribution of the respondents, 71 are from the 6th district or from the lone city of General Trias, which is considered an independent component city. This was followed by 44 respondents from the 4th District, or Dasmarino City, which is also another independent component city. 35 are from the 3rd District, 
from the city of Imus, and 33 are from the 7th district, which is comprised of four municipalities ranging from fourth class municipality until to the independent component city, while the rest are from the various districts within Cavite area. Results of the survey revealed that computer internet self-efficacy were high to very high. Mean response suggests very high confidence in using internet and information gathering for online learning. For self-directed learning, three out of five statements were reported to have a high mean response. Statements like carrying out one's study plan, seeking assistance when facing learning problems, and having a higher expectation for learning performance showed positivity towards self-directed learning. Mean response for learner control showed moderate to high mean response. High mean response was observed in the third statement where students repeated their online instructional material when deemed needed. For motivation for learning, moderate to high response with statements like being open to a new idea, when learning and sharing ideas with others are interpreted to be high. The fifth table shows that respondents show confidence in using online tools to communicate with others and also in expressing emotions and humor through text. These statements show high online communication self-efficacy among the respondents. The findings of the study suggest that the respondents had the highest level of preparedness in the dimensions of computer or internet self-efficacy, but had the lowest possible mean score in the learner control dimension. These findings conform with the study of Chung in 2020 and Hong in 2010, which also found that students had similar online learning readiness outcomes. However, the overall learning readiness score shows that generally, students' online learning preparedness was high. It corresponded to the study by Kermizi in 2015, which noted that the respondents had a high degree of overall online learning readiness conforming the learner's readiness course was carefully reviewed and understood to achieve an effective online learning environment for students. To understand if online readiness differ in terms of demographic variables, non-parametric test was utilized. Based on the result, self-directed learning, motivation for learning, and online communication self-efficacy significantly differ in terms of location, history, Effect size was also reported to be 10%, especially in motivation for learning dimension. Such significant difference in the three online learning
technology, Sir Rector de Versosa from Davao Oriental State University, Dr. Hanelet J. Nicolas from Bulacan Agricultural State College, and Sir Christopher A. Malay from International School of Saint the Philippines University, Cavite. Right after the, the presentation of Sir Christopher uh, Malay, we'll have the third batch of the open forum. It will be have for the open forum. There you go. It's already so deep is there that for those who are in there or Access you make your lunch. Good day, everyone. I am the person. There is motivation for her needs and communications have been significantly important. Such significant difference given that the online learning readiness dimensions can get limited to some factors such as the, the infrastructures provided by the government during the online class, as well as the diversity and condition of learners in their These factors were reportedly to be a significant effect or factors on online learning. When respondents were asked if they could continue to use online learning next semester, the majority of the respondents said no. In contrast, more than half of the respondents have a good overall learning experience. However, when asked about their overall online learning satisfaction, only a fraction were satisfied. In a similar study by June 2020, their conclusions that the females have a better online learning experience than males. To add, Morante in 2017 noted that this type of education aided women in achieving high level of success. The researchers also determined that the grade 12 students had a distressingly bad online experience compared to the grade 11 students. In terms of the problems encountered during online class, majority of the respondents reported disruptions due to things such as household chores, noise, and lack of personal space. 186 respondents reported a lack of motivation due to the absence of physical interaction. This was followed by poor internet connection and connectivity and signal, slow personal computers, and among others. These reports are in agreement with the findings of Prof. 2020, reporting unstable internet connectivity as one of the main problems in online learning. Furthermore, several studies also reported that devices could be troublesome, especially during updates and during high data demand for online video conferencing. From what was found in the study, it was determined that most of the senior high school students are highly prepared for online learning during pandemic. The computer internet itself because and self-directed learning were among the highest in the five dimension of online learning readiness. Among the pornographic part of the study, self-directed learning, motivation for learning, and online communication and self-efficacy significantly differed in terms of motivation. It is quite sad that more than 75% of respondents showed this agreement in continuing to use online learning for the next semester. While more than half expressed enjoyment in their 
personal experience, only 35.6% were dissatisfied over all in their meaning. The descriptive analysis presented the rankings of the respondents personally encountered problems such as disruption from surroundings, lack of motivation, and as well as poor internet and slow devices were some of the difficulties forced or faced by online learners. Overall, students with a high degree of online learning readiness amidst the challenges brought by internet, physical, and as well as the pandemic. As part of the education institution, the resilient Philippines University aims to address this situation to potentially improve the learning experience and satisfaction of our stakeholders. The result of the study will be vital both in designing class instructions and effective content delivery in an online learning environment as we hurdle this COVID-19 pandemic. On behalf of my collaborators, I would like to take this opportunity to give credits to those who made this presentation possible. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much, Sir Christopher. We have just watched and heard from our third batch of presenters, various topics and researches from education. They are now ready to answer the public questions. Our third batch presenters, Sir Alvin Mahawan, Sir Rick Sturdy, Sir Marvin, Dr. Hani Lett, and Sir Christopher. May we ask them to open their camera and do again the heart to app. So we have one, two, three, and four. Four hearts. Ayan. Okay, thank you very much. Congratulations, sir. Ma'am. Let's start with our questions for Sir Alvin. Sir Alvin, congratulations. You have an impressive time. Time packages. You also mentioned that those are open access and free for us teachers to download, right? Yes. That's great, sir. Um, were those copyrighted already, sir? Alvin? Um, were those already copyrighted? With copyright already? The, the Kai packages that were uploaded on the net? Yes, I'm going to Hello, Sir Mar Alvin. Okay, We're back, sir. <laughs> So Alvin, um, once again, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to find it. Ah, okay. Well noted, Sir Alvin. Um, once again, thank you very much for sharing your your type packages. Um, I'm sure teachers will will benefit from those um, um packages, and of course our students. And for Sir Rex Lee, congratulations, sir, for your remarkable study. Features as researchers are really inquisitive. Um, testing approaches is a good exercise for us to know if this one works or what needs to be improved. So you conducted the 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 flip classroom experiment in a physics course, right, sir? And would yes, you recommend that flip classroom also in other courses or learning areas? 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, it is highly recommended because uh, the very essence of that is uh, of flipping a class is to get away with uh, too much lecture in the classroom and uh, making the class time to be uh, uh, used or utilized for active uh, learning activities. Uh, say, for example, if, if you want to explore uh, flip classroom in other courses like, uh, for example, history uh, or social sciences, uh, students may read in advance before coming to class the, the lecture notes, the, the reading materials, and then uh, in, in, in class time, so the teachers can now uh, uh, give activities. Uh, the, the challenge is if the students are not self-regulated. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sir, Sir Rex. Uh, well, I agree. That gave me an idea. I am teaching social sciences. And of course, other audience here in our meeting room may also try sleep classroom. Thank you very much for that, Sir. Sir Marvin, this is your second study. Congratulations, for, um, Sir, what was your inspiration for conducting this study on the satisfaction of students, on support students? I mean, satisfaction of students on the support service. My inspiration for having this study is mainly the, the upcoming level 3 accreditation for the program of CDSA Pasaka. Since this study uh, was conducted before the ISO certification of the entire university, so I believe that this is one of the requirements for level 3 certification of the program BSE and BE in here in Pasaka campus. So that would be the a motivation for conducting this study. Thank you very much, Sir Marvin. Um, well, I guess accreditation really gives us inspiration to develop, <laughs> innovate more, and aspire more for our university. Thank you very much again, Sir Marvin. Dr. Hanilev, congratulations for your extensive development of learning modules. Um, well, I, I'm sure this will facilitate learning of your students. It seems that nowadays teachers are not just teachers, classroom teachers, but also module writers. Uh, Ma'am Panela, are there many local rabbit racers in your locality? Yes, in fact, uh, Bulacan could be the capital of the Philippines, the forerunners of the uh, industry. Uh, the Veneracion couple, uh, they reside in uh, Baliwag, Bulacan. They are the ones promoting rabbit production all throughout the country. They uh, founded the Association of Rabbit Meat Producers of Incorporated. And uh, their organization is our partner in uh, most of our RDE activities on rabbit. That's great to know, Ma'am Ma Hanelet. Uh, Ma'am, regarding the um, presence of those researchers, how did it help in contextualizing your, the contents of your developed modules for that particular course? Uh, through interviews and conversations, they just, um, they just gave ideas on uh, how they want uh, agriculture graduates to uh, to be involved in uh, the rabbit industry. So uh, they gave uh, all information about how they do their business. So I included them in the modules. And um, uh, before that, of course, uh, as I said in the presentation, they were the ones who who encouraged us to include the subject in our curriculum for animal science majors. 
so that uh, more agriculture students will be um, acquainted with rabbit production as a livestock and not just as a pet. Amazing. Thank you, Ma'am Hanalette. Well, I guess in your university, the Khan Agricultural State College, um, in your institution, I mean, um, you have that interface of research extension and now traction. Thank you very much again, Ma'am Hanalette. Sir Christopher, thank you for your for sharing your study. Measuring students' readiness on online learning help us and enlighten us on the needs of, of our students, especially that they are doing this online learning it is just alarming to know based on your results that they do not wish to continue online learning um what do you recommend sir to address this this result or this challenge actually ma'am one of the possible reason uh, before i uh, answer the question is that the video was affected also by the the case of the al volcano so before the pandemic actually started to push for lockdown, we already have what we call uh, lockdown uh, here in Cavite. And that is because uh, the effect of the volcanic eruption or the case of Taal. Now, um, as part of our recommendation, because this one is actually an offshoot of, uh, of research done by the student, uh, I have already raised the concern to our headmaster. And we are trying to, to create uh, a safe space, a very creative environment, and at the same time, adjust the number of synchronous and asynchronous meetings, especially for this coming school year. Um, for, um, as I said, one of the key factors that I think really affected uh, appreciation of students, especially in an online environment, even though uh, most of them have uh, internet connections, is because uh, we have an extra month, more than any province I can feel, especially in terms of lockdown. So, um, what we can only do is to modify the way we deliver our contents and as much as possible, make a meaningful engagement to our uh, elements. Said Sir Christopher, thank you very much for that. And for now, we just witnessed the informal presentations of our researchers in the field of education. Let me summarize some major points and highlights in this session through this session synthesis. The issues, problems, and, and concerns that were raised were categorized into teaching learning processes, curriculum, teachers, and other support services. Under the students' learning um, challenges include the readiness and problems of students in the modular distance or online in relation to the use of technology in learning, addiction and online gaming and gaming applications is the growing concern among millennial students. Also, Issues that were addressed by researchers in this session were mastery of the MELC, improving student motivation, conceptual understanding, factors that affect their performance in NCAT, um, limited knowledge about these course markers, the needs of graduate students on research capabilities, the role of the parents for in the education of their students, and for the curriculum, the concerns were focused on the offering of BDB TED um, to develop students who possess competencies in teaching computer programming and the implementation of PBL track in senior high school. Other issues that were examined were student satisfaction with the support services of the school and the stress among teachers. Thus, the proposed solutions that were mentioned in the different researches presented earlier were under the teaching learning processes for children, teachers, and parents. On teaching learning processes, the developed teaching learning materials were tested and evaluated. This includes the CHI packages, supplemental learning materials, learning modules, research course book. 
Um, also, the teaching approach flipped classroom was used as an intervention for students. It was also recommended that students prioritize studying in their learning modules than playing online games. Teachers handling journalism um, are recommended to improve student skills in basic writing through the DMs. For the curriculum, the offering of the DPP TED was found to be feasible, sustainable, and therefore necessary for the students and the community. On the other hand, it was proposed that the speakers assess the needs of the schools offering PBL, PBL in senior high school. For the teachers, the stress coping model was proposed to answer their stress. Also, it was proposed that teachers pursue professional development. It was also proposed that parents monitor their children in their modular distance and online learning. The COVID-19 pan pandemic has brought enormous changes in, in our educational system. Teachers, students, administrators, and parents are faced with various issues. Yet, despite these challenges, um, teacher researchers innovated and developed ways to answer the needs of the students, teachers, and the school. Ultimately, the research and innovations geared towards the development of students, teachers, curriculum, and the schools. At this point, let me thank everyone for your time in attending this session and making our experience in this international conference a rewarding and fulfilling one. We hope to see you again next year during the third ICEA conference. This is Sir Lagdi Mantales, your moderator, and Sir Joel Balindan, your rapporteur. Before we go back to the main room, may I request everyone to please open their cameras for some photo documentation. There you go. We'll have one to six months. Again, and one to three. Okay, thank you for that. We will see you again in the main room and let's wait for the other sessions to finish after which we will have the closing ceremony for the conference. Once again, thank you everyone for your participation and attendance in this session.